Voyages in Sea of Thieves almost feel like a bit of an outdated concept. Like what, you're gonna have me spend gold on this so I can go out and eventually make a profit? Why would I do that when there is a world event right there free of charge with more monetary value than any voyage I could buy? Of course, that isn't always the case. There are some voyages that are surprisingly lucrative and the prospect of guaranteed reasonably safe treasure can definitely be enticing. Not to mention that you'll be getting your hands on specific items that can be boosted with an emissary flag rather than the mishmash of loot you get from most world events. But what if I told you that there was a voyage in this game that defied that expectation? A voyage that is not only expensive, but also doesn't guarantee to turn a profit. Introducing Captain Stashes, the loot box of Sea of Thieves that promises to give you literally anything from a supply crate all the way to a chest of legends. I mean, you know me, I could never resist the call of the abyss and what better way to waste my money than spending 250,000 gold on 50 loot box voyages that are almost was guaranteed to not turn a profit. Not to mention that in order to be able to buy them, you also have to be a captain, which makes for another minimum investment of another quarter million gold just to access them. I was fully prepared to waste a bunch of money just for the sake of experiment that day, but it wasn't until I got a reminder from the voices in my head that I realized I was dumping even more cash into this than I thought. If you hit the limit, it doesn't stop you. Oh. Damn it! Okay. So we wasted a little bit of money. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for that, Rare. Nothing quite like letting me buy more voyages than my ship can carry, but whatever. I wasn't planning to turn a profit anyway, so what's another 100,000 gold on a day where I already wasted 250,000? So don't take me not buying any supplies as a cost-saving measure. I just knew that the captain stash had a very decent chance of spawning a variety of different supply crates anyway, so I figured I wouldn't need them. What I did need was to get out of the wilds, because the voyage will always send you to a random island in your general vicinity, I wanted to make sure that we do that in the western part of the map. Not only because of the nice weather, but also because of the myriad of small islands that could potentially be chosen for the X marks the spot mission. The first such mission sent me to Lone Cove. Not as small an island as I would have hoped for, but better than anything you get in the wilds. Finding the hidden treasure was no issue, though I should probably mention that there is another stipulation to the captain stash. Every single dig will spawn random AI enemies for you to deal with, meaning we were in for one heck of a day. A day for which Rare decided to set the tone. Seriously? I got an empty chest? I actually feel scammed. I didn't know that at the time, but every single treasure chest you can find from a captain's stash will always be empty, making it arguably the least desirable item you can find. Another thing that was fairly undesirable was for me coming across another player, which of course was yet another thing I had to worry about. Hello! Hello! That's a really nice sale! Thanks, man! As far as first impressions went, that guy seemed to be a pretty nice fella, and that suspicion was confirmed when he began helping defeat the phantoms that spawned because of my voyage. In fact, he even went out of his way to help me find the dig spots. Oh, it's gotta be, like, right here, right? Oh, I guess I can't dig it up, can I? Oh, you can't? Oh, you're right! I was very appreciative of that because seeing him double gun his way across the island made me feel like being on his bad side would make for a horrible time on my part. Though I couldn't shake the feeling that I had seen him before. But for now, I had more treasure to find and you can be dang sure that I was not happy about this voyage having sent me to Smuggler's Bay. It took me so long to find the treasure that random AI enemies had spawned before I even grabbed my shovel. But when I finally found the spots... There we go. No way! Welp, it was at that point that I had to learn these captain stashes can also spawn gunpowder kegs. Being about 40 minutes into my session with this boom keg being the most valuable thing by far, I wasn't just gonna leave it behind. I begrudgingly took it on my ship and, well, what do you think is the one thing nobody wants to hear when they bring explosives on board? Cannon fire. I heard cannons being fired not too far away, but at that stage I was already committed. I set sail with a stronghold gunpowder keg on board and it didn't take long to find the culprit. Another sloop was coming my way and if the shots they took before were anything to go by, chances are they weren't friendly. But when they randomly dropped their anchor as I was about to broadside them, it began to make sense. One thing I haven't told you guys yet was that I didn't intend to keep any of the treasure. I promised the voices in my head that if they find me I'll be handing off anything on my ship. I requested that they should equip a set of red sails so I can tell it's them after having shouted out identifying map markers for them so they can use that to find me. And well, within the first hour of my journey, one of the many voices in my head had found me to claim the loot. The keg was now his problem and I was ready to start over from scratch, but little did I know that the next time I come across another player, it was not gonna be a peaceful exchange. 
All right, it's time to get some loot for the people. So we portal hopped onto a new server, found a map marker, and went about collecting more treasure. Surely if I keep going at it, I'm gonna find something good eventually. And something good we found. After another keg that I definitely didn't want to be carrying this time. With a message in the bottle dug up from the map, we were in the big leagues. The most valuable item you can find is an ashen wind skull, which can sell for up to 10,000 gold. But a message in a bottle is going to send you to yet another island with a new dig. One which can hold extremely valuable treasure. Lucky me, that island was the same one as my next voyage had sent me to anyway, so it was two for the price of one. One which definitely didn't disappoint. Would you look at that chat room? A chest of legends, arguably the best item you can get from a captain's stash and definitely a piece of treasure that is very sought after. I was extremely excited about finally having something good to give away, if we can stay afloat. If you told me that this Athena chest was cursed then I definitely believe you, because next to the AI enemies that spawned as a result of my voyage, the island itself also began summoning random enemies at an alarming rate. All the while this storm was coming closer, and let's not forget that some pieces of treasure are best left behind. Oh no, and I don't have ammo. Oh no, that is extremely bad. Oh no. The universe definitely did not want me to hold onto that chest of legends. Typically, most pirates make it a priority to beeline towards the next outpost so they can secure the cell on an item as coveted as this. But in my mind, this wasn't my treasure. I was just holding on to it for the voices in my head. So it was my job to protect it until the time came that one of them found me. But unfortunately, this wasn't going to happen anytime soon. Instead, I had to deal with an Athena 5 brigantine. Remember, brigantines are typically manned by three pirates. There was an ice cube's chance and hell of me defeating them, especially on a sloop. I had neither the supplies nor the confidence to risk my chest of legends in a fight that was rigged against me. So instead of facing certain demise, I decided to hide the chest. I ventured deep into the cave system of Plunder Valley, hoping this would make for a good hiding spot. If I was to bury the chest, a map bundle will appear on my ship, which no doubt is going to fall into the brigantine's hands. So I gambled on them not searching the cave. But deep down inside, I hadn't given up that maybe, just maybe, these these guys weren't hostile after all, though that idea vanished into thin air as I approached the exit because their assault was in full effect. I had to give up my vessel, painful as it was, and create distance to the chest so that they don't sweep the area. I decided to hide at the top of the island, and I mean, okay, getting sunk is never fun, but I had to admit that these guys definitely got a chuckle out of me. We located weed in your boat, so we have to destroy it, sorry. <laughs> we have to, to take the weed. They're gonna be really disappointed when they find out that I don't have any weed. The universe is not without a sense of humor, sending a rank 5 Athena emissary after me just being granted a chest of legends. But they eventually disappeared into the night and I could confirm that said chest was still hidden. In fact, they even left some of my loot, so I jumped after it to check what I could salvage. Well, it wasn't much better than nothing, as they like to say, though I do wonder how these guys managed to turn my rowboat into a submarine. Anyway, I found a new hiding spot for my Athena chest before taking the speed run way back to my ship. Hey, you wanna know what's funny about leaving? treasure on an island, it can disappear when you get server merged. The badge is purely cosmic. <gasps> oh my god, you guys were just talking about server mergers. Yeah, that tends to happen when there aren't enough ships on your server. I had escaped the cold grasp of fate once more and I was left with a decision to make. Do I accept that I had expended all of my luck and just go sell the Athena chest to make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands? Or do I continue to hold on to it in hopes of being able to deliver it to its rightful owner? Let's be real, it wasn't my choice if you think about it. These idiot voices in my head voted with a 70-30 split in favor of me continuing to stack more loot on top of the chest of legends. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. There was a new reaper's chest on the map which they could use to find me, but there was also a reaper emissary who might also try to find me. I thought I was being cheeky when I decided to head east into the devil's roar, knowing it is the one place on the map that reaper emissaries usually avoid because there you cannot escape the PvE. But you know what could give them a reason to go there? Another Athena emissary! Remember, at rank 5, reaper emissaries can see every other emissary on the map. Of course, I was not running a flag myself to avoid getting UAV'd, but if there's another emissary in the roar, I literally might just become collateral damage as they go for this fella. Naturally, getting cracked now was also horrible timing because these guys could roll up any minute now. And a minute is how long it took for me to make Karen sod off. Just in time to run into a Megalodon because let me tell you, there is no way that this chest of legends is not actively attracting trouble with the amount of stuff I had to deal with. But there was no time to complain because 
because their voices demanded more treasure and more treasure is what I would deliver. In fact, what I was lacking in fortune when it came to encounters was more than made up for by the sheer amount of high value loot I began obtaining. The Reaper was currently busy at a skeleton ford giving me more time to open more loot box voyages and you could feel it because as they went about completing world events the amount of Kraken and Megalodon spawns began increasing. A small price to pay for the loot that I was getting but when I saw a second Reaper I felt like I shouldn't push my luck. My voyage was closing in on 7 hours allowing me to stack a lot of treasure off what is arguably the worst voyage in the game. However none of the voices had found me. So after a lot of back and forth we decided to leave it at an outpost in hopes of somebody stumbling upon it at the start of their own voyage. And sad as I was about no one having found me to claim these riches, I did wake up to somebody tagging me on Twitter. Lo and behold, somebody found the loot pile and I was more than happy knowing that after 7 hours of collecting, sinking and stealthing, someone would get to enjoy all those riches. If you want to enjoy another video, then what about you check out my latest rowboat adventure in which we try to make money without using our ship. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea and until next time, peace.